Today is Thursday, December 17th, 2015, and the title of this rant will be War is Not the Answer. Now, uh, the other day I commented on how it seemed that every single Republican candidate, possibly with the exception of Rand Paul, really thought that war was the best answer. We wanted World War III. We were going to bomb them to smithereens. We were going to make the sand glow in the Middle East. And we would not have any terrorist attacks here in the United States because, gosh darn it, we are going to protect uh, the United States. And uh, with all of that testosterone that was going on out there, I started thinking, what would it actually take uh, to have some type of a relative peace in the Middle East? And uh, it did take a long time to sort of think this through in the sense that, uh, you know, w w when you end a war, uh, a war has to be ended politically. It's uh, never really ended on the battlefield. At some point in time, a government entity, in essence, cedes power, and the other and the other entity absorbs that power, and then is the all-powerful, so to speak. So, what would it take to end that type of war? And I came up with a couple of things. Number one. Uh, we have to have diplomacy, which means that we have to have good working relations with other countries. So that would mean we would have to have good working relations with all of the countries in the Middle East. And even though we have friends over there, they have their, they have their own agenda. And in many cases, their agenda is, does not even remotely coincide with ours. Saudi Arabia has, has an agenda, and uh, uh, a lot of it does not coincide with ours. Uh, Turkey has been a favored nation of ours since the Cold War when we set up uh, listening posts and uh, monitoring posts in Turkey. And they have their own agenda, which is not aligned with our agenda. Two examples would be, we know that uh, uh, Turkey doesn't want to have anything to do with the Kurds. Uh, in helping out with this thing. And uh, number two, uh, we know that uh, there are some people who are making money off of ISIL oil exports because they're, they're taking some of the oil that they've stolen and they're routing it through Turkey. So a lot's got to go on in terms of diplomacy. And I would say that the best way for the United States to have uh, the, the, uh, the ability to have strong diplomacy uh, is to have a strong, rich, viable government uh, that is the leader of the world economically, uh, because that's how we're going to end all of this. It's not going to be through war. And um, by that, got to raise that tax base. But getting back to it, what else needs to be done to, 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 to end uh, our, the wars in the Middle East, to end the type of terrorism? Tremendous amount of economic investment. Tremendous amount of educational investment, tremendous amount of um, infrastructure investment, uh, tremendous amount of empowerment of the average working person over there, uh, and that especially includes women. And and I mentioned before that other co countries have their own priorities. That's a that's a big that's a big uh, thing for a lot of those countries over there uh, because their infrastructure sucks, their educational system sucks, their economic system sucks. Okay, uh, they don't empower anyone over there, especially women, uh, and uh, that will take a long, long time to overcome and override. In the meantime. You know, you want the United States to be that beacon uh, that everyone comes to, to be that exceptional nation. We need to be the economic powerhouse of the entire world. And I, I think about uh, the tremendous outrage that our sisters and brothers on the Republican side have against Iran. Uh, but I don't hear them harping too much about uh, Saudi Arabia. And I remember earlier this year, and I haven't checked it lately, but uh, earlier this year, uh, Saudi Arabia was going to go on uh, to, to have the most beheadings this year than they had in any previous year. And of course, they just got a new king or whoever it is that's over there fairly recently. Uh, so the, even though that new king may be a little bit more in line uh, with, uh, let's just say, uh, the entire world and their thinking, in the home country, you know, whatever is going on over there is still going on and it's still going on strong. So, uh, and of course, 
I don't know how many of that's how much that's been done in Iran, but my my son, my feeling was is that in Saudi Arabia that went on a much much more. And of course, when we talk about empowerment, women just got the right right to uh, to uh, run in an election. I believe I don't even could they vote. I guess they could vote. They could run in an election. Uh, so it's a very, very, very meager start. So a lot, I mean, just in, in, a lot's got to be done in the Middle East uh, to bring about some type of end to what I would call that war on terrorism because all of those things help breed terrorism. You know, when you're economically depressed, when there's no educational ability, no, no way to get further up, when the infrastructure is such that you don't have clean water, you don't have enough heat, you don't have enough electricity, uh, et cetera, you don't have, let's just even say, the police system, a justice system, uh, when the women in the environment and, all, and many of the men do not have any empowerment. And remember, in a lot of those areas over there, there is a, a healthy minority in a lot of those countries, but it's all majority rules. And everyone else is a second-class citizen. So there's going to be a tremendous amount that's going on. So when any of these Republicans go out there and say, hey, we're going to bomb them to smithereens and that's going to end it, that isn't even going to closely... Uh, or even remotely come close to ending it. And again, uh, the United States needs to be the leader, but it's a long, hard slog. It will take years, and there will be setbacks, but we should never give up on that uh, thing. Oh, I didn't mention one other thing. Uh, how much will the governments have to change to do all that? That's going to be the real killer. Uh, can there be that type of change where there would be representative government uh, even if it wasn't necessarily representative democracy over there, could any of that be changed? Their many of those governments have a very strong stronghold. Uh, long time, long slog. slog. Uh, the United States can do it, but we need to be that economic powerhouse that can help institute those changes.